All right, Fantasy Book fans, welcome to another episode of Fantology. This is our monthly episode where we have our full cast, our full Fantology 5 on to talk about fantasy news and talk about the upcoming competition that we're running on Twitter. So myself, Steven, Jake, Josh, Ben, and Ryan are all ready to get into it. What's up, guys? Hey, Stu. Hey. Hey, good to be here. Ryan, also good to be here. <laughs> Mixed feelings. <laughs> All right, we'll see if we can improve upon that by the end of the episode. <laughs> my cat is meowing at me in the background, so I'm sorry about that. That's my okay. wife my wife literally let her into the room with me when we started and closed the door. So <laughs> sounds like a strategy. <laughs> is that can we see her in the background? Um, I can't tell if that's part no. of your, your she's uh background. she's wandering along my dresser over to my left now oh, okay I thought I saw her in like the the right side of your bookshelf background it's actually a virtual background Jake I don't think that's real well yeah I know it looked kind of like the like the blue screen thing was not mm. working on it or something all right anyway I wish, I wish that was where <laughs> I, I lived <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's start with our month in review, month of February. There's actually more fantasy news in February than there have been in a previous month. At least I felt like there was when I was uh, preparing our list of things. Uh, previous months, we've kind of had to dig up the dregs, but there's there's been some good stuff. And maybe we start with WandaVision, that, I mean, fantasy adjacent. Uh, it's a pretty popular show. My parents are watching even. So uh, that tells you the, the levels of popularity it's reached. <laughs> yeah, so I've been really intrigued by WandaVision. First of all, because I really like it. Like, I think it's really good content. I'm one episode, I haven't seen that. We're recording on a Monday. I haven't seen the previous Friday's episode, episode eight, okay. I believe. Um, but I, I've really enjoyed the content. But I've also, like, I'm kind of surprised that it's become such a, so popular because it's like pretty unique. You know, it does like, a lot by, of. By you mean to me like kind of niche, like you like if this was any other show besides Marvel, it probably wouldn't be popular. If if you're just to give me an elevator pitch of a of a TV show that hits on a trope of a sitcom in previous decades every week and combines that with a really nerdy um, superhero superhero thing, like that's kind of that not very many people know about uh-huh. and i would say like, oh i'm intrigued and i would definitely watch it and i know that you guys would watch it and i know that most of our listeners would probably watch it but like i wouldn't expect it to be like water cooler talk in the office or, or, yeah you know what i mean like it I appeals expect it, it appeals to all ages apparently everyone's yeah. drawn in by at least one episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah i actually haven't seen any <laughs> Ryan, wow. you're a, you're a you're a real uh, wet blanket thus far. <laughs> well, we we started off with TV. Come on, you know I don't like fantasy news TV stuff. I want books, 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 books. Well, this is based off of comic books, so anyway, we're not talking about the comic books. Anyways, uh, WandaVision's been good. Apparently, Ryan is killing the conversation. No, we may, maybe we'll do a review once the series is wrapped yeah, or something. Yeah, I think I think we are. I have a friend that's like a huge Marvel fan, um, and so I talked to him about maybe coming on doing guest appearance nice. um, after after the show finished was wrapping. So I think we'll nice. get a review out. Yeah, I like it. Okay, let's try to get away from TV then. What do you want to talk about, Ryan? What books? Um, well, I mean, this isn't really news, but it's news to me. Uh, that James Eilington, the author of the Lycanius trilogy, is uh-huh. uh, he's, I think, finished up his first draft on a new book, which is set in a totally different world. But if his uh, debut trilogy, Lycanius, is any indication of his uh, his writing, then I'm excited for it. Yeah, I know. I've I've kind of been following his posts every now and then. I'll I'll randomly think about Lycanius and like, oh, I want to go look at his blog and see what he's doing. 
and I, I did see that one. I don't remember what the exact update is, but I think it's pretty close. I kind of lump him and Brian McClellan together a little bit because they're both have finished their current projects and are starting these new projects. And I feel like they're both about the same way through. So those, I, I don't know if either one will release a book this year, but next year I'm we'll say for sure. Yeah. I think that that's probably a good estimate, but that that's all I have to contribute to the fantasy news. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stop being a wet blanket, Steven. <laughs> Joe Abercrombie also posted an update uh, yesterday, I think right at the end of the month. And he said he started a new book. He's, he's finished up Wisdom of Crowds. I think it's been done for some time. He's just kind of doing last edits. It's coming out in September. And uh, he's starting a new thing, a new project. He didn't really do too many details, but he said it was in a different world, a little bit different take on things. And the book is tentatively titled The Devils. And he has like 35,000 words written in it. So Sounds like it'll kind of be the same tone, uh, you know, classic, uh, classic Joe, but maybe a different world. So is this not not attached to First Law at all? Uh, like, apparently not. He said New World. So wow. okay, take that for, yeah, for for what it's worth. Wow. I I've been doing I've been reading uh, the second trilogy, and I'm on Trouble with Peace, and I love it, man. I love I, lo- I I I really like the first trilogy. I really, really liked uh, uh, the standalones. I'm like loving this this trilogy. So. Yeah. Okay. What's this? What's the second get better trilogy? Better and better. Well, so the second trilogy is called Age of Madness. That's the one that's going to conclude in September. And it's it's based about uh, 15, 20 years after it longer, thirty years. I'd say it's twenty five ish years. I don't know. The characters that are left yeah. standing after First Law are like in their 60s it seems like yeah something like, like that yeah so okay. uh, I, i'm staying away from spoilers but um they they make appearances but it's a pretty new cast with kind of the next generation but it's so good so yeah, i'm yeah. on red i'm on red country right now how many more books do i have to go until the very next one <laughs> well so, you have sharp ends uh, sharp ends you have a short yeah, story book. you need to read the short stories okay that seems doable Jake and I just recorded the Blade itself review yesterday. Nice. Yeah, yeah. We kind of talked about the the yeah. new series, just because I really want him to put more of that sucking Jake. up fire, tucking <laughs> under your tongue magic in a future book, but it doesn't look like we'll be getting one. Hmm. I think that he might have inadvertently stumbled upon like this new literary technique, where you put something in that's very fascinating, and literally never talk about it again, and it leaves readers on the edge of their seat because i until the last page of the first trilogy expected that to make a comeback and never did and I'm then honestly just kind of fits the tone of his grim dark <laughs> i'm glad someone else um that basically that happened to someone else because i was so excited for it i was like this is so cool just somehow like i didn't know if it was related to his chaga smoking spirit seeing and i don't know yeah, see, yeah. I never wanted to ask about it because I was sure that it would come in clutch and save yeah. me in the final battle. And yeah, but may, don't, you can't, don't do spoilers, Ben. <laughs> you, you can kind of just chalk it up to, I guess, oh, this is some, some humorous irony. <laughs> but Apparently the real explanation is he literally he just forgot, forgot yeah, about it. forgot about it. But. <laughs> we kind of talked about that yesterday. <laughs> You have to be realistic with these things. You know? <laughs> Some things you just forget about. Anyway, I, I hope it's good. I hope this new work is good because I read his half a war, half a something. Oh, the Shattered Sea books, yeah. Yeah, and like I stopped halfway through the third book because I just wasn't really into it. Uh. I, I didn't go back and finish it, but he struck gold with First Law and I think I really hope he does again because, yeah, hmm. it's great. Yeah, I never tried those, but obviously those are more YA, so I'm guessing a different tone. I just, I held off on reading First Law so long because I just thought that the Shattered Sea was just like fine. And I Uh. could not understand why everybody talks so highly of Abercrombie. I'm like, I mean, it wasn't like the worst thing I've read, but it was like not great. And then, sorry for any fans of Shattered Sea. It's just like- (laughs) Yeah, burn. Well, I mean, it was like fine. Like I didn't hate it. 
it wasn't terrible, but I couldn't understand why Joe Abercrombie would be like listed as someone's favorite author. Now I can, you know, not saying he's mine, but like he's up there, you know. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, there's some uh, George R. R. Martin news this month. Does that intrigue you? I know what the news is actually. And so I'm going to say no, it doesn't intrigue me. <laughs> okay, is this, uh, does this go back to your Patrick Rothfuss? burns that you like to give out <laughs> yes likely <laughs> so he wrote this blog post which amongst other things he said that quote he was written hundreds of pages last year and he has hundreds more to go and he's making great progress on winds of winter and we're wondering how long is this book <laughs> because dance of dragons was published in 2011 it's 2021 hundreds of pages still left hundreds written last year <laughs> what is going on here <laughs> and this is the first draft too so yeah i feel like usually things get edited down not up though oh definitely. yeah are you well i'm just saying like i'm not saying about the length of the book i'm just saying length of time to publish oh. yeah. it, it, he hasn't even finished the first draft in 10 years that's true so and apparently he just took on a new tv project as well which is like you know, good for him. Glad he's doing what he wants to do. But uh, fans of the series are it's probably... Like, uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that that's what has slowed him down for, for Winds of Winter. Oh, right? without, without a doubt, Browns. yeah. yeah. So, yeah, doesn't bode well. Yeah. So we got, a, you know, we got probably the greatest fantasy TV series ever. But at what cost? <laughs> at what cost? <laughs> Maybe he'll make the greatest sci-fi TV show ever. So I don't know. I remember like he did, he had a show that came out a few years ago on sci-fi. Did he? Yeah, it was well, it was based on one of his one of his books. It was like mm. on a on a spaceship, and there's kind of a monster on the spaceship that was killing people. Was I he was involved the, in the writing? I think he was writing? involved in the production somewhat, mm -hmm. at least. His name was attached. Okay. Was it called it was, Firefly? Shut up. <laughs> What's firefly this? is great I, I know what firefly is right and i think probably most of our <laughs> listeners know what firefly is but what i don't know and maybe our listeners don't know is what is the history of firefly within you guys <laughs> because i feel like there's always some sort of firefly jab made and i and i don't understand it <laughs> we, we watched it in college together i think you, weren't you there with us jake no you watched it freshman year probably no no no, no we watched no. it oh it's probably when you guys all lived in that apartment that i didn't live in yep that was yep yeah yeah i thought it was all right but i i don't understand the crazy fandom around it i, I, I loved it i was okay, never so drawn into it josh loved it obviously steven and ryan hated it okay I'm no ryan I didn't, I didn't hate it i'm just okay, ambivalent. here's the thing i think ryan didn't like it because whenever we played it'll wake him up from a nap that he was taking on the couch <laughs> <laughs> I think Josh liked it because he just needed something to fanboy about and that filled the need the niche. It's a great show. And Stephen was rightfully like hot and cold on it because yeah. some episodes are great and some are just like duds. And uh, so yeah. I don't know. I think yeah. if you grew up with Star Trek and, and you're and, really into that, then Firefly's awesome for you. Ben but. Ben didn't really care because he was just swiping on Tinder during every episode. Yeah. That's accurate. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right shameless <laughs> well thanks for the invite guys glad i missed this this segment of our lives uh, sorry about sure that you're, I'm sure you're doing important things with your life jake probably yeah <laughs> all right jake to uh to redeem ourselves here we could talk about the wheel of time tv show i i think the the main news is that the composer left right Composer left, and, Buckley. yeah, Buckley, David Buckley, is that? I think so, yeah. And and then we saw the dagger. The dagger, yeah, that's the that's Which, the main news. I, I'm kind of like mixed feelings about the dagger. It it doesn't look bad. Like I'm not like the design isn't 100 percent faithful. It's not 100 percent faithful. I think the book it says the rubies and the hilt, which would be like really hard to show uh -huh. on screen. But I just couldn't tell if the dagger itself looked high, as high of quality as I'd like the show to be. You thought it was just like wrapped in gold foil it's or something? Not, the, not that it's wrapped in gold foil, but it just, I don't know. It kind of, 
it kind of gave the vibes of maybe some sort of like local channel adaptation of a fantasy series like like the the show, i know the, i know the, you're the about to say truth. cw or- yeah, yeah, like a C- CW yeah. is on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, what is the the, the sort of truth series that was uh-huh. um, a thing for a little bit? Shannara, that that show, or Shannara as well. Yeah, it just, I don't know. Come on, man! It's a, a, Amazon's got so much more money than those things. They do. It's yeah, it's going to be true. much higher quality. Yeah, they put way more money into this than any of those shows. We, we saw we the dagger back? for two seconds. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah. Um, did the composer give any reasons why he left? Uh, no there was as far as i know there were no reasons given like it could have just been he didn't have yeah. time for it like he was double booked or okay. something. it wasn't like there was no there wasn't any information like due to creative differences or anything like that okay hopefully we get a good song we gotta have a good intro song that's what game of thrones has taught me i gotta get some good tom music i want to see him need, strumming yep, his now guitar yep. we need that as well <laughs> Maybe a Lin Manuel wants to get attached to it. He likes making fantasy music. <laughs> I well, it's it's so funny because do you guys remember like the Witcher song just like completely took the world yeah. by storm for like two weeks? Toss a coin Toss to your a Witcher. Coin to yeah. Witcher. Like and, who would have uh, guessed that I know the Witcher would have had a breakout song? I yeah, really yeah. like the Witcher TV show, and I know it got mixed if at best reviews. But when I watched it, hearing the song for the first time, I was like, that's so cheesy. But somehow that was the most popular part of it. Like, I thought I the, like show the song was great. But I like it I, too. It's super catchy. I did Especially not... the metal version of it. Have you guys heard that one? <laughs> that, yeah, that one's pretty good. Yeah. I've but heard like, a lot of versions. <laughs> it is super catchy, which I mean, that, that has to be like the main point. But I did not, like Josh said, I was not expecting the song I guess, to blow up. I guess you guys, we are what... in the age of sea shanties taking the world by storm. So <laughs> don't you really can't. Don't get, like, don't what, get me wait, started, Ben. Wait, what's a sea sh- <laughs> Wait, wait, what, what, what are you talking about? about? You, you guys... haven't heard the song that goes, there once was a ship that put the sea in the name of the ship with the billy of tea. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're going to get copyrighted. Is this but, the new uh, Old Town Road? <laughs> Uh, it's it's better than Old Town Road, I'd say. Well, Old Town Road's pretty. Just good, yeah. scroll through TikTok like ten times, and you'll come across. I've one never. Right now. I do. It's not just like TikTok. yeah. It's just it's just like a TikTok thing that people will like do these songs, and then they'll add like more voices to it. Hmm. Just Josh Ryan, and I are exposed. Are we're we're aging ourselves right now? Well, <laughs> I, I only I only know of it because I was on the, on the way down to um, the cabin. And Ryan was like, you should listen to sea shanties on the way down. And I was oh like, gosh. okay. So I just look up on the music app. I was like, sea shanties. And there's some album from 2021. And I was like, this has got to be it. And I'm listening to it. And it's literally recorded in like the 1800s. I was like, why did Ryan <laughs> want me to listen to this? And then he had to, once I got there, he had to show me the, the video. So I was completely unaware. Hmm. Yeah. Ryan also exposed me to, we were doing a board game night and he blasted sea shanties from his iphone speaker and it drove all of us insane and i think that was his strategy to win the board game it's like the new russian fail videos for ryan i think <laughs> oh <laughs> like the raro Ra rasputin song <laughs> <laughs> all right we're, we're getting pretty far afield <laughs> they, let's see what, what else do we want to talk about in news um michael kramer and kate redding are recording don shard and wave kings prime i think yeah. they finished don shard they're currently doing wave kings prime Super recent, at least at the time of this recording, they both released like 15 minutes of behind the scenes for yeah. of King's Prime. I uh-huh. was like listening to it. And so I think that's the first time I've ever watched them record like a mm-hmm. like in the recording session. It's so pretty, crazy. To pretty see. fascinating. Yeah, it is. And it's crazy. Like I was watching Michael Kramer and he would like would pronounce something and I wouldn't tell what was wrong with his pronunciation, but he would like go back and redo just like those few words. I was like, huh. Yeah require some dedication so yeah they're pros yeah Yeah, they're they're amazing yeah um that's jake's (laughs) official policy (laughs) so uh, oh we should probably plug sorry we should probably plug because they were kind enough to uh, record our intro and they their charity of choice is books for prisoners Mm -hmm. and so Uh um if you have some spare chains to toss um maybe toss it that way instead toss a coin to your prisoners yes prison become any more tempting 
Okay, Ryan, we're not, we're not, this. we're not going down this road. We probably shouldn't do that right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, what, what else? There's, there's an upcoming, sorry to go back on shows, Ryan, but there's an upcoming shadow and bone show, yeah, which, Netflix. Um, which I was not that excited about. And then I watched the trailer for it and I was like, dang, that actually looks pretty good. Um, trailers are tricky. Tr- they are tricky, but it could be good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've read one book by Lee Bardugo, who is the author, and uh-huh. I liked it okay. Um, but Elliot Brooks has a good video about everything we kind of know about the adaption that's coming up. So if you're interested, I would go watch her uh, video about it. Anything anything else coming up? Um, one One piece of fantasy news. We've been trying to get into more of the um, new author space for reviewing yeah, yeah. books. Um, so we got a couple coming up um, news for Phantology, but news for the world, there's a new a, a new author. You may have heard of him, Daniel Green coming okay, out with the, okay. at the book. Um, his his novella by it, it's uh, March 30th, right? Yeah. Just so, a few weeks away. Yeah. It's called Breach of Peace and it has a cool cover. Yeah. Maybe we'll get Daniel Green on here. Do a little author interview. <laughs> Absolutely. Does, doesn't he have Michael Kramer and Kate Redding to narrate his as well? Uh-huh. His uh, yeah. book. And who who is the cover artist? I know it was like the Michael Whelan. Was it Mike? No. 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 It's 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 like a known one. I don't really know cover artists though. So. He said he couldn't remember if it was recommended to him by Evan Winter or um, the guy that wrote Kings of the Wild. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Nicholas Eames. Nicholas Ames. 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 Yeah. yeah, he said it was recommended to him by one of those, and this was okay. on a live stream, and he couldn't remember which one recommended to him. Anyway, it's a known author. It looks um, cool. Yeah, it looks yeah. really cool. And if you want him to be on our show, uh, tweet at him or something, and yeah. say, hey, go on Phantology. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, let him, let we, him we'd know. Love to him. We're trying to give these small authors a boost. <laughs> we know he needs it. So. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have enough subs on his YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right anything else so okay i i just want to plug something real quick this isn't really about news um but i i talked to you guys a little about a bit about it but i've been researching nfts which don't stand for these non-fungible tokens mm-hmm. yeah um and i i just wanted to like give like a 30 second review of them or not really review but it's a way that i think is going to be really interesting moving forward as a way to support content creators Okay. Um, basically it's it's a way to use blockchain the same blockchain that backs ethereum which is one of the larger cryptocurrencies um and it's a way that you can mint a file and then sell that so you could like do a limited edition uh, or a original um piece of content and sell that and so it's a way that creators can create that and sell it and um that fans can invest in content creators that they like um and it's it could be anything it could be like a an image it could be a song it could be a podcast episode it could yeah. be a video it just it's up to the content creator to decide what is available right yeah. yeah exactly um and i don't really have any news i don't personally know of any content creators that has that out it's just been something that was like really interesting to me especially as like new and upcoming hopefully upcoming i don't know new newer content creators ourselves just like that there's this new industry that's coming out about people wanting to find ways to support content creators they like. I know there's a lot of content creators like Daniel Green that I've been following for a long time that I would probably be like, want to look into, um, you know, both as a showing of support and as like a potential investment, you know? The question I have around this, and I think you shared a a podcast episode, don't remember what podcast it was. Um, They kind of talked about this, but there needs to be some way to display what you own to be able to like put it on a shelf be like, you know, I own this thing to, cause you, you, you want to show it off. Right. But that's the point of owning things for the most part. Yeah. I, I could see a future in which somebody has kind of a wall in like 10, 15 years of a, a wall of screens that kind of like display what yeah. um, original, like kind of like they might have a display of 
um, coins that they've collected or baseball cards that they've collected. Right. And people hang those up and display them. I could see people doing that to display works of art that they've um, collected from these content creators. Yeah. I mean, obviously, a, uh, audio would be harder to do that for, but anyway, yeah. go ahead, Ben. Huh. Well, I was going to say, if you're super lost, think about this as like a baseball card, only like the baseball card is created by like the baseball player and any like anybody that buys that baseball card is like contributing directly to the player. Um, and there's going to be like mm -hmm. a limited amount of those baseball cards. So that's right. kind of what you yeah. kind of think about. It, it's if you want to listen to a cool podcast about it, um, MKBHD, who's a really big YouTube uh, technology creator, has a podcast called Waveform. And he interviewed a his artist that makes like the channel art for him, um, uses it in his like personal like uh, business. So he interviewed his artist about it. And anyway, just, cool. I thought it was a cool addition to the space. My brother and I have been talking about how like different ways that YouTubers could get people to invest in them. And we were like, you know, could you buy stocks on a YouTuber or something like that? And obviously, you know, m most YouTubers don't have individual companies that you could invest in, at least publicly. And so this could be like that. I don't know, just wanted to throw that out there. Huh. Man, I okay. buy so much Vsauce. NFTs, <laughs> love these sauce. Yeah, I do too. I think they've kind of hit their. They have like five channels now. You could buy like yeah. Vsauce five. Yeah. So, yeah. So on on Discord, maybe maybe tell us if you want like the the album artwork that we have, or like maybe a favorite episode or favorite series that we cover or something. Give us ideas of what what we could mint. Absolutely. Yeah. But in the meantime, you can support us on Patreon. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, maybe, yeah, no, never mind, never mind. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I had an idea, yeah. but it's not perfect. I'll have to think it through. <laughs> if you do want to support Phantology, yeah, you can do that at patreon.com <laughs> slash Phantology underscore books. All right, that completes our mid-roll. <laughs> this was a little more unique. So uh, I, I think that's it for news. I mean, there's a few more things we could have talked about, but that that that's good before, you know, Ryan gets too upset that we're not getting into books yet uh let's on the talk verge about of tears yeah i can tell that would be I, a I good book that. title that would be a good abercrombie book title the verge, verge of tears, of tears. Verge of tears. Yeah. just made me think of somehow i manage by michael <laughs> scott <laughs> <laughs> okay so last month <laughs> in our twitter poll we did top fantasy romances and the winner was delusions of grandal and I, I guess we we were really cognizant of spoilers on this one because romance is obviously, if you say someone's in a romantic relationship, that has some spoilers attached to it. So maybe we don't say what the top three were right now in this episode. But uh, if you want to see those results, check it out on Twitter. And uh, this next month, we're going to do top three magic systems. So we've all kind of been thinking about that. Actually, but though, uh, before we talk about that, we wanted to just take a minute to update listeners on our plans for the year as far as our TBR, our individual, the five of us, our individual TBRs and what we're planning on reading and getting episodes out on. I can, I can go first. Um, so immediately short term, I'm reading a book called Descent of the Drowned, which is um, part of our new and upcoming author uh, series that we're trying to put together. Yeah, I guess we should talk about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, Stephen, I believe you just recorded an episode. Um, yes, the first of the authors. What are we, we, we got to come up with a catchy name, like the Writer's Lift series to steal the Twitter hashtagger. Yeah. Uh, we can't do author's shelf because that's what Legendarium calls theirs. Hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out by the time yeah. we push these episodes out but um i'm i'm enjoying that book um and looking forward to interviewing getting that interview out um but then after that long term i am looking i'm uh planning on reading starting malazan uh book three well first i'm going to finish up um the uh trouble with peace which is the second book in the second trilogy of the first law so I'm, I'm about 50% of the way through that. So I'm going to finish that. Then after I'm uh -huh. done with that and Descent of the Drowned, I'm going to start Malazan book three, which I'm playing on the Memories of Ice. Memories I read the prologue. Ice. I read the prologue um, earlier, like a couple hours ago. And uh, 
it was fairly ambitious. <laughs> Progress. <laughs> Do you so, remember that prologue, Ryan? It's nuts. Um, is that the one with? Uh, I I can't say. I'm, we'll, it just we'll goes like way back in time, and there's all sorts of things going on, and I really. I, yeah. I think I do, but we'll have we'll talk about it after. Okay. So I, I'm hoping to get at least two or three Malazan books under my belt this year. Okay. Um, I don't know. Re- depending, reasonable. That's reasonable. a reasonable goal. It, it's like a reasonable goal. Um, so, but but if we do that, then by the ending of next year, we should have all ten books done, hopefully. Okay. Um, Ambitious. Yeah. So I'm hoping for. Just checking your math right there we've done two we've we done two i know it's, it doesn't add through. up it doesn't add up <laughs> but okay um so i'm hoping to do battles then i want to then i want to um read uh the elderlings i've, I've read the first i've read the first fits in the full or fits uh the first three books yeah i read, I read those a while ago like back in 2016 realm of the elderlings realm robin of the hop. Elderlings. Yeah, yeah robin hop so i, I kind of want to make a big push to get more of those trilogies done because i know she has what four trilogies in that series um there's three trilogy well there's three fits trilogies then there's another trilogy that's kind of on the side and then there's four other books that are also on the side so okay yeah so there's a lot of books yeah. in the realm of the elderlings so i want to read uh, a, a good amount of those and then i also want to read some one-offs that I've been really interested in, like uh, Kings of the Wild, which I've heard really good things about, and the sequel to that book, which I'm forgetting the name of. The Bloody Rose? Yes, The Bloody Rose. Yep. And I've also, at the ending of the year, want to get into the second trilogy in Powder Mage, because I haven't read that yet, but I've read the first trilogy. Oh yeah, we need to finish that. I also need to get into that one. So maybe maybe Jake and I can do that at the same time, get good episodes out for you. And if I have any time in my TBR, I've heard really good things about Mark Lawrence and I haven't read any of his books. So I'd like to maybe get a Mark Lawrence book under my belt. Big There's year my, for Josh. Big year for me, but I, I have high hopes for it. So what's hit your good book goal? goal? Yeah, what's your goal, Josh? My, my goal, my ambitious goal is 50 books. Hey. Um, so that includes also nonfiction books that i usually like to try and read one or one nonfiction books for every about three or four fiction books i read <laughs> just <laughs> to keep myself a little four, bit solid ratio. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're usually shorter you yeah. know yeah you're not helping your case here my, my tbr I'll read 200 pages for every 3,000 pages <laughs> yeah, <I read>. exactly. <laughs> my tbr is pretty similar in terms of Malazan, I was thinking I would read all of the, the Malazan books this year. I've read oh. one. I'm starting the second. So my initial plan was read, finish Malazan and all of Amber, Amber, Abercrombie. Am I putting an M there where it's not supposed to be? It's Aber- Abercrombie. Abercrombie. Like, I'm saying Amber Crombie. You know, like like Fitch? Just yeah. not okay. the Fitch, yeah. Um, Steven's favorite clothing of the year in high school. I've, I've read the... Uh, the no <laughs> <laughs> i read the first one of both uh like the blade itself and um gardens of the moon i'm currently on dead house gates and it's a good contrast back and forth I'm, yeah i'm not too nervous about getting through abercrombie this year but man dead house gates has been kissing my butt so <laughs> my goal has been 20 books this year but i also did buy 20 books on audible when they had a sale over <laughs> valentine's day weekend <laughs> Yeah, you went crazy. <laughs> a lot of them are some sci-fi stuff, so I'll try to sprinkle some sci-fi in between those That'd two. That'd be good. Series. We need more sci-fi. Um, and then any other any other time, like Josh was saying, if I have more time, I'd like to um, finish the second Powder Mage trilogy. And I've never read Lightbringer. I know we've done like a review on the end of the Lightbringer series. Yeah, we need to do those. But yeah, so I, I could read through those and hmm. possibly get some reviews out, but. Yeah. Well, I um, was planning on doing Kings of the Wild to coincide with Josh and also the Children of Time books that were out. Maybe you can get some sci-fi uh, yeah. book reviews together, Jake. Um, I really enjoy Children of Time. And one of those other audio audible books I got is the second one, Children of Ruin. So, Yeah, so I was thinking about doing that. I also just finished um, the... I'm up to date now on Dresden Files, which was more done just out of my own personal interest because we've already done those but i was thinking about possibly recording an episode on my thoughts of the series overall if people oh, are definitely. interested 
yeah yeah, that. yeah, yeah we got to do that and um uh past past those two i haven't really figured it out i mean i might i might want to read a little bit more into the malazan world just or uh, i mean my name is Amanda rake on the discord so i I feel like i need to explore yeah we expect a certain level of expertise from Amanda rake yeah (laughs) oh i Uh, forgot to say um the new author book i'll be reading hopefully in the next month is called orlevac by benny hendrix so look out for that one as well okay can you spell that yeah, it's O R L U V O Q. It's a it's like an Inuit based um, okay. fantasy book. There's some uh, candle magic and narwhal magic, narwhal horn. You had okay. me at narwhal. It's I've I've read the first few chapters um, <laughs> before I started Malazan, and it's pretty good. So I'm excited to get through that. Nice. Well, I guys, I'm like in the middle of stuff right now. I just finished up the Poppy War and I've been told I need to read Malazan for the podcast. And so I'm like, okay, I should probably start doing the second book on that. Um, I don't know. I kind of, I could be persuaded to read. I'll probably just jump around to where I'm needed. Yeah. So, so Ben, so Ben, you're basically volunteering for people on discord and Twitter to, if they have any favorite books that we have not mentioned yet, that we need to do reviews for you're our guy is that what you're saying yeah i could do that and here's the thing i've been taking some time to like kind of just like um re-listen to all the cosmere stuff so that's just kind of been my splurge recently um so. yeah we and and for as big of sanderson fans as we are we have this huge gap in cosmere episodes like we barely we have one really old episode on Way of Kings that I think we're actually going to re- re-record pretty soon. And then uh, Mistborn is like one episode for six yeah. books. Yeah. So yeah. I just I just rented uh, the second Mistborn book. Um, so I could listen to that. Yeah, we could, we could do an episode on Will of Ascension. Okay. That'd be fun. I need to reread. Yeah. So anyway, that's, and then I'm also, I'm reading Lightbringer with my wife. And so that is slow and steady. We're like 20% of the way through the third book. So hmm. that only happens on road trips. So <laughs> maybe we'll get Jake to catch up and maybe we can cover those. I'm, uh, I'm a little in between as well. Just finished the poppy war with Ben. I've read the prologue to memory, memory of ice. <laughs> I started re-listening to, uh, to Abercrombie stuff as well. So I could cover the first trilogy with Jake, and uh, that really sucked me in. So I think I might just listen to all of his books and get ready for Wisdom of Crowds. That's not contributing to the podcast since we already covered all of those. But well, uh, yeah, I should I say like I've him, so <laughs> I, I've also been listening to Abercrombie's books, and again, not for not to contribute to the podcast. But I think we're all going to be ready for the for the next book when it comes out. So. <laughs> yeah are you gonna have to just, are you gonna have to justify like we did with rhythm of war like five, <laughs> 15 episodes of that. that was that was a unique event josh it only comes around <laughs> once every few years it's true stay tuned for stormlight archive book five. <laughs> oh my gosh that will be starting now <laughs> this is like i listen to a bunch of politics podcasts and it's like are they started talking about 2020 right after 2016 happened you know and it's, yeah. it feels like that with a sanderson book sometimes uh-huh. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> okay uh let's do magic systems so okay. when we say magic system you kind of know what that means right it's the magic within a book some are more systematic some are more fluid and soft magic we can kind of talk about that as you unveil your top three no spoilers just kind of talk about how the magic works, what's cool about it. Don't say who's using what or who's killing who with big magical spells. <laughs> None of that. But Abracadabra uh, was used very ineffectually at the very beginning of Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Does that mean you're starting, Ben? Well, wait, I have a question. This is kind of, I was, I was considering, I was pondering this question before the, the episode. Is some type of magic necessary for fantasy books? Is that a prerequisite for the uh, for the genre? 
if a book does not have some magic, is it fantasy? So um, just, that's interesting because because otherwise it would just what would it be like? Just fiction. Just fiction. Sword fiction? and shield. I, mean, I don't know. If if like if Stormlight didn't have magic, it would be like a sci-fi. Book okay, but say it's like or yeah, or like if Lord of the Rings didn't have magic, it'd be like sword and board, like uh, Ryan was saying, just like a medieval. It, like uh, on, it would almost be like an Athorian legend. I feel like yeah, but even those, Athorian those legends have magic. Have magic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind hmm. of the the fantasy part of the the genre name, right? Is the how fantastical. Fantastic. Or, but what if I don't know. What if you, I mean, you can, what would you divide, would you describe like other creatures? Like what if you had other races of people, but no magic was used? And like different creatures, like a dragon that was biologically sound. But could not use magic. Yeah. Like, would you describe that as magic or? I guess, I guess it would still be fantasy. I think like, if you're, yeah, if you have other races and creatures. Yeah then i would say yes you could does, have that without does dragon riders of pern have magic it doesn't but that's more sci-fi yeah like, which, I, which it's, is it's a it weird it's a weird like combination of the two i mean I it like. kind of it depends on how you define magic it's like does dune have magic no it doesn't but it oh well, yeah it, it, i think it does it would, does it's it's not magic though it it's, uses systems that are that provide the same uh story elements that magic provides yeah but it's yeah um but like the the teleporting i think would be the the most magical thing in Pern. well and oh oh in Pern. i was in Pern. Pern. i was I like that, i missed that in dude uh, yeah I'm like I, I acted like it was part of it even though I didn't remember. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah that part that part because uh. like, because in Pern, like it's all like they genetically engineered the dragons, right? So it's all. Mm-hmm. What, what about like Jurassic yeah. Park? Would that that that's considered fantasy? And that no, doesn't... it's not. That's sci-fi. Oh, that's man. sci-fi. Sci-fi for sure. So, okay. but, I mean, this <laughs> is kind of what I was. Speculative fiction umbrella, right? So, the, well, this is why I was thinking about like, I was thinking like, like first law, it definitely reads like a fantasy book, but there's hardly any magic in it. There, like, there is magic, but it's like, kinda, especially like, when you get away from the first trilogy and like these standalone books. Yeah, the backdrop is magic, magic is leaving the world, and the world's transitioning into, <clears throat> you know, kinda not like, not magic ruling the day. Kind of similar to um, a song of ice and fire, which obviously has a lot more magic. Yeah, from what I've read of um, first law, but like half of the storylines have like no magic, and like the the focus isn't really on that. It's really just Daenerys, Daenerys has the most magic. And then there's the White Walkers, which there's magic involved, but it's not like yeah. a huge focus of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah, a large we should percentage have another... of people who don't even believe that magic is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. We should have another episode where we debate the philosophical under the, the philosophical definition of a fantasy book. Okay. Ryan, you, Ryan, Ryan, you look like a philosophy. <laughs> Ryan looks like philosophy major right now for people. That why are, are you saying it? Because I look like a hipster with a beanie and a beard just like, and some glasses. Is that why you're saying no, it? And hipsters well, think the they case, know. Man. Add the bookcase behind you. <laughs> and yes, right. the, the beanie beard and sunglasses are helping your philosophy. Let me just grab this book right here. And... <laughs> you also, own a, you also own a cat. There's also a cat prowling do, around you. So. I do own a cat times three. okay so right. i guess the, the the other thing i wanted to highlight is this isn't going to be a debate on um hard systems versus soft systems i think some of us will have our preferences but like yeah that's like the most common thing you'll see like on fantasy subreddit is like yeah oh, there's too many hard magic systems out there or like how you know like if it's not a hard magic system then is it even worth reading so i don't think we're going to debate that you know what i mean so yeah, it's just our preference. And then this is going to go, we're going to send this over to Twitter. Uh, feel free to submit your top three. And then that'll go into a scientifically based Twitter poll competition with fabulous prizes for the winner. Actually, uh, the book that I just reviewed, Shadowless, um, the author, Randall McNally, was going to send me a copy. And I was going to uh, gift that to the winner of our Twitter oh. poll. Nice. Yeah. That is exciting. Yes. You don't have to spend all of our Patreon money on the on the Twitter <laughs> price. 
Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben, what are your top three? Okay, so top three. I'm going to go. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just going to say the Cosmere because they, it all revolves around. No, the you can't do that. You no. have to choose. That's... Pick Veto. one, man. No, oh, okay. no, no, no. Well, here's the pick thing. One. Here's the thing. If I can't pick the Cosmere, if I can't pick the Cosmere, I'm going to pick Lightbringer in its place because I think as a. Well, you can pick something within the Cosmere. I know, but I'm just saying, I think that Lightbringer does the hard magic okay. system that Sanderson kind of goes does. I think it, I mean, I'm only three books in, not even three books in, but it does that hard magic system, I think better than any individual Sanderson book, but I think the Cosmere as a whole needs out. But so if I'm okay. like, in terms of that category in my head, I'm going with Lightbringer. So that I guess the color, the, the color drafting system. Right, the color drafting system where, where I think to me, it's so like whimsical, but not at the same time. Um, and there's very definite like rules around what each color does and how it affects uh -huh. your personality and um, and it's woven into like every aspect of the world and it just does that very well for me. So I'm gonna go to Lightbringer. I my if, top choice. if by Cosmere you mean specifically the shards of Edel Nauseam. I was thinking like Nauseam combined with like investiture. Investiture, um, I think that's fine, but I don't think you can say Cosmere and have that mean Stormlight, Mistborn, Warbreaker. No, Alliance, it was more like how how Six of Dusk. No, it was more like how um, kind of shards of, of divinity. Yeah, uh, I think I think you'd say that. World. I think you say like eight well, too late because I already made the case for Lightbringer. So. Wasn't it top three, or are we just you doing get, one? You get yeah, three, but I have man. my other. I, have, I know, but I have I have like these categories <laughs> in my head. So okay. all right, let's hear number two. Okay, try to defend two, you. <laughs> I'm gonna go Dresden for its breadth over depth. I think that okay. Dresden is really cool because it just has so many different like things that it pulls from. You have like fairies, you have vampires, you have um norse gods you have just like all these different like uh takes on these fantastical things that are all kind of combined into this um grumpy old wizard <laughs> so uh, come on I, he's I, not he's not, not that, that old grumpy or no, old. he's not that old not that grumpy but whatever uh, just this interesting character that is able to wield these different magic systems to great effect um and if you want kind of an elevator pitch, my favorite part of it is um, mini fairies that are highly motivated by pizza that come in clutch at the most unlikely of times. So that is one of my favorite, one of my highlights of Dresden. Um, to, 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 to the rescue. <laughs> yeah, to, to, exactly. So, okay, so I got Lightbringer, I got Dresden, and it's been a while since I read these, but I really, really appreciated the perfect combination between hard and soft in the realm of the elderling trilogy that we talked about earlier by robin hobb mm. it, realm of the elderling is not a trilogy refers oh, to all the books okay sorry but you're uh, talking about uh, just the first trilogy i'm assuming that's trilogy. what you've read yeah that's what that's what i read and it's actually one of the first fantasy books or, that i read um and it just it was really cool to me i, I can't i can't remember specifics of it too much but <laughs> I, I don't know. It still sticks the, with me. The uh, skill. Kind of, yeah, the, the skill, skill like, kind and of the like, wit. Right. Um, uh -huh. So I don't know. That's kind of my, that's that's going to be my top three right now. Okay. Stealing, stealing some big ones. Yeah, heavy I tried hitters. to steal the biggest, but I got <laughs> shot down pretty yeah, soon. <laughs> vetoed on that one. <laughs> Ryan, let's hear your three. All right. My number one is going to be, I mean, sorry. <laughs> Stay tuned for my number one. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on Ryan's <laughs> My number three is going to be the Powder Mage. Uh, what? How cool is it that people can snort gunpowder and get stronger? I mean, I that, love the cocaine magic. <laughs> the, the cocaine magic uh -huh. system. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And then you also have um, the other uh, magic that you're more used to with the uh, uh, what are they called again? The privileged. The privileged. The privileged. Yeah, they they kind of have a more traditional form of magic, 
And then you even, there's even some people who have blood magic, which is also uh, Dragon man. pretty cool. So <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a few different uh, forms of magic, but definitely the, the powder mage magic is the most unique and my, probably my favorite from that book. Um, and it, it's part of the reason why I enjoy those books so much. Uh, for my number two pick, I am going to have to go with uh, the Realm of the Elderlings as well, but specifically, um, I really like the concept of the Memory Stone and being able to uh, uh -huh. kind of sculpt something out of the Memory Stone and then storing memories inside of it and almost reincarnating. It, it, it's, it's an interesting form of reincarnation. I guess. And for my number one pick, it is going to go to drum roll brrr, Warbreaker. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, it's obviously towards that. Yeah. It, it, it had to, I, I mean, there are so many good Cosmere, pretty much every Cosmere magic system could be in this list, but I think my favorite has got to be Warbreaker, in which uh, it's it's an interesting take on investiture. It's almost like you have a soul and you can use that soul to animate items and then you can collect other people's souls, but it's called breaths. And, uh, and then it gets more complicated as you go on with, with different levels of biological entities. And uh, we get one of our favorite characters from it, uh, Nightblood in the Cosmere. And it's starting to tie into Stormlight as well. So it, it's mm -hmm. just, I think it's my favorite Cosmere magic system. And we actually haven't seen that much of it with Warbreaker um, being the only novel. There's all, there's Emperor's Soul, which is a novella, but um, I'm, I I'm think, super. That's, I think oh, that that's was in, in, that's yeah. in Cell. That's in Elantris world. Okay. All right. Scratch that. <laughs> How dare you bring it I said. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure Sanderson has said that this book is supposed to be like the unofficial prequel to Stormlight. Yeah, I haven't heard that. Well, I may. I, is it going to be like a prequel trilogy? Because isn't he working on Warbreaker? Yeah, he, two? Warbreaker he wants to do Warbreaker two eventually. But he said that would have to come after. Was it all of Stormlight or just Stormlight uh, Era one? Yeah, I don't remember. But was that for just for? business reasons or for i think story I think for, reasons i think for continuity reasons huh. yeah I well mean, i think you know i believe ben's right ben i think you're right on yeah. the prequel yeah thing. i said that before yeah ryan you stole two of mine i had <laughs> warbreaker as number one and powder mage as number two so i'll have great to minds think there. alike <laughs> and i guess it's up to you to decide if you want your entry to be the book or the series except for the cosmere uh, or if you want it to be like a specific type of magic within, like you, there's a few in Powder Mage, so you could have just chosen yeah. one, but like like you did with the the memory stones. So up to you. Yeah, I guess I would just I'll just for the sake of simplicity, just pick the um, the Powder Mage magic from the Powder Mage trilogy. Okay. But anyways, th those are my top three: um, Powder Mage, um, Memory Stone, and the Warbreaker uh, nice. breath breath magic system. All, All right. right. Can I go next? Or Jake, do you want do no, need some ahead. time to figure it out? Uh, I mean, I've got some, Let's go, Josh. I got some replacements, but you go. Okay. <laughs> so um, my number three, and it's been a while since I've read this book, but is Alice in Wonderland. Um, <laughs> and okay. Josh coming hot just like the absurd absurdist magic in that book is really cool it does whimsy and absurdism in like really interesting ways and you never quite know what's going to happen you got people like changing sizes you got like I, I don't know it's a really cool um place and it's a really cool uh, idea of how magic could affect like your perceptions and both your perceptions on like the magical world and then your how you what happens like if you were to think about going back to the real world I mean, maybe that's where the shard of whimsy settled. Yeah, I was. I was <laughs> say, I, I'd like to see on like Wolfram Alpha or something the usage of whimsy, since 
since Brandon announced that's the, the name of a shard. Okay, that, this, is that this is getting into spoilers. This is getting into spoilers for it's the name of a shard. It's okay. Nice. We are are we depriving people of reading of freaking out, geeking out when they read that in, in Rhythm War? That's all I'm saying. We all we all had that moment of like we is just got it? yeah, it's rhythm of war. I thought it was during a live stream that he announced. Oh, no, it was in one of the okay. Well, okay, we're not talking about any okay. more detail. Okay. Um number two, I'm gonna have to say Harry Potter. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of like side eye for Harry Potter because like the magic. <laughs> is kind of just like spells right that like uh jk rowling came up with uh -huh. um whenever she needed a spell to do something she came up with a spell to do it or a potion to do it or like, and it was cool for that book and then they forgot about yeah. it <laughs> or or like a new type of magic like love magic to save harry um but what is that <laughs> oh harry was saved. How harry's oh love. oh okay for some spell. reason i was thinking of like Okay, I was going into some fan fiction scenario or something. <laughs> well, well my bad. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, Phantology after dark. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but having said that, I think it was really cool that um, she crafted this whole world around the use of this magic. And the world, while there are like the world building in Harry Potter is not perfect. I think that the way that magic is interwoven in that world is really cool. Um, and again, sometimes it's just for convenience and it's not like a super hard magic system, but it is cool. And I did love it. And it's what sparked what what is one of the things that sparked my love in uh, fantasy okay. reading. Respectable. So, sure. Yes. Uh, another weird one for my number one, but we talked about WandaVision at the beginning of this episode. And I'm going to have to say, I mean, there's debate about whether it's magic or science in the MCU, but I'm just classifying it as magic in the MCU for this discussion because so you're think, just taking superheroes just well, specifically within the MCU, like, okay. Kind of like I'm doing kind of like the MCU. He's not using all of the MCU, are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm using all the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, it was a good idea. <laughs> you, you gotta be specific. Say Scarlet Witch's magic. No, I wasn't really saying Scarlet Witch. Be, I, like if I, had to, if I had to pick one, I would pick Doctor Strange. But just the way that, like, all, like, when you start with Iron Man. Okay, fine. I'll just say Doctor Strange. Infinity Stones is definitely magic. Come on. You can't yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Kind of, yeah, but it's like that, supposedly yeah. that they were formed at the beginning of the creation of the universe. Also, Iron Man doesn't have magic. I know. That's what I'm saying. So you start off like the MCU with this really like small scale, like magic or not not magical at all. I mean borderline magic because like there's no way that like the yeah. physics would really allow for a suit. But but we'll just say not. Or the, the element he comes up with. Yeah, or he comes uh -huh. up with a new element. Okay, so, but kind of, like, it's pretty grounded in, like, realism. And then you go into, like, Captain America, which is which is a little bit more, like, magical. Like, he supposedly survives in, like, you know, frozen sleep for decades or whatever and then comes back. But Sure. But it, it does get a little bit more magical and he can boomerang his shield, which doesn't really make sense, but he can because it's a special mail. Okay, we got it. We got it. Wait, we, got to fast forward. We, we got seven more minutes. I know, I know, but you fast forward into the ending of the MCU when you got freaking Thanos with all his Infinity Stones. You got freaking Doctor Strange with all his time magic. You got like the, you got like all these different magical things going on. You got Peter Dinklage up like shooting a star out of like <laughs> Thor's hammer. You just got all these things going on. And it's really cool. I think it deserves to be mentioned in our magic systems there yeah, you go. I, I think that you're talking about tall Tyrion lannister <laughs> yeah conda forever <laughs> yeah you got black Panther. okay so fine if i had to pick one i'm picking dr strange but mcu so you can do that with that one you will ben i'm I sorry your, what to do your with that. <laughs> got taken That's okay. place for that <laughs> okay I'll, I'll go next i'll be quick um i tried to just come up with ones that um i didn't think anyone would do and i thought no one would think warbreaker it's it's like one of my favorite um cosmere books but ryan took that one so i'll start with my number three being um the magic in the bartimaeus trilogy if you guys have read that it's, it's definitely more YA, um, but the magic revolves around 
um, summoning demons to do your magical bidding. And there's kind of this hard element of doing the research to know like what kind of summoning circle you need to do and the right sort of like preparation to bind them to do the kind of tasks you want to do. Okay. And then there's, there's a little more, um, there's other ma magical elements um, that come into play. I really like that one. Um, number two, um, I'll say the name of the wind. It has similar to Powder Mage. It has ah, a lot of. I wanted name of the wind. <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna do it except I already had two <laughs> stolen from me. <laughs> um, I the naming is really cool. I think sympathy is is one of the coolest. I know it's kind of like a an archetype of magic, but I I think it's so well um, realized in the name of the wind series. Sympathy is a chemicals. real thing. I'm I'm still waiting to be proven wrong. Still trying to you know, split my mind into enough pieces and speak the words of binding and actually do it. But I'm pretty convinced you could do it. I also really love the, the do they call them runes in? Um, the syllogery? Sil the syllogery? Yeah, yeah, whatever that, yeah. Sigildry. Sigildry. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Sigildry. Ryan. I think that's really cool too. I like how there's like a mathematical element to it. Uh-huh. Um, he said there's six known types of magic and there's two more that he hasn't even thrown in there yet. In that, the series. That, so eight total. Roth Rothfuss has, yeah. Eight total. Yeah, so there's, um, there's some. Uh, I mean, according to my wiki search before, because I was going to say that, it said eight, but. Uh, I bet one of I the mean, unknown ones is sex magic. <laughs> well, apparently. Well, that's order, that's okay, a known sorry. one now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Valerian. No, I, I. Definitely some fey. You know, there's the grammar A and the glamour A. Mm -hmm. I think that just the, the magic. The way it's realized in King Killer Chronicles is really good. Um, how it's like really mystical, but some people have started to kind of make a science out of it in some aspects, but in other aspects, mm. it's just completely unknown and kind of untamable. And then number one, just for the like the more spooky feel to it, I really like the magic in um, Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell. I like the, I don't know, it's just so like, kind of creepy and spooky, all this magic used to defend yourself from these shades, which are basically um, spirits. I think that's really cool. This is the Sanderson novella for those who don't know. Yeah. Yeah. On Threnody. Nice. Yeah. Threnody, yes. Okay, the shard world there. Um, so I have a few that are remaining, I guess. You took my Name of the Wind one, Sorry, which, yeah, my favorite book. So I, I was definitely gonna do that. No one's, <laughs> no. No one's done Stormlight, so uh, someone's got to do Stormlight. Stormlight's awesome. The the Knights Radiant, yeah. the Ten Orders, all really of the order is. there. I'm it's I'm great. such a Type A person, so I just love how it's all symmetrical. And it fulfills like that power fantasy. The Stormlight abilities are so powerful and so yeah. cool. That way, if I had to go specifically, I'm going Alt's Collar because that's what the official quiz said I was, and it's awesome. It's official. And, and Jasna. Yeah, or Yasna, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard both ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if, if we go past Stormlight, I'm sticking with Sanderson because the, I think the Mistborn series needs to be highlighted as well. I'm going to take uh, Farukami over Alamancy just because Sazed is cool. And I like the idea of being able to store attributes like in objects and then recall it later. And if you can deprive yourself of something, you can store it in a metal mind and then use it later. Anyway, it's it's very imaginative as Sanderson's magic always is. So uh, I guess I'm going with two Sandersons to start off and I'll maybe do a somewhat of a third Sanderson. I'm going to go with the Wheel of Time magic, Jake. I can't believe you didn't, you didn't go, go, go there. I, I do really like it, but it's kind of, it's not as unique anymore. And also I was trying to go with more, more lesser known magic. Yeah. yeah. You guys, you guys were all trying to be too hipster. I can just swoop in and take the big guns. <laughs> and obviously it, this is not Sanderson's magic system. This is Robert Jordan's magic system. I just mentioned, cause he finished the series, but the, you know, the soft part of it, the hard part of it, um, the way that it all blends together and, and the magic users and uh, the different strengths between men and women and just how it's shaped the entire world. Yeah, I, it's a great way to use magic. And, yeah. yeah. It's so well, again, super detailed and nuanced in how 
the world building like it, it infuses every aspect of it can we do like a lightning round of honorable mentions all right real quick i like lycanius was awesome i think that deserves to be highlighted as a as a cool magic system okay Lycanius was cool um the the fire magic from the blade itself tucking fire under your tongue for future use. Uh, let it go let it go Jake. That future use is never used oh uh, what a there's this some good magic in uh, um, Emperor Emperor's Soul. That's really good. The stamps. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There's some good magic in Rage of Dragons. There's uh, some some gifted and also the whole idea of going into the underworld and that you see how go. that works out. Thank you, Ryan. Um, a song of a song of ice and fire does the soft magic system so well, where it's just this awesome power that you kind of get a feel for what it can do, but also you you're never sure the cost. And like the unintended consequences of it. Same thing if we're using uh, soft magic system, Lord of the Rings, kind of granddaddy, pretty great. Um, and Poppy War. Ben and I just finished Poppy War. There's some pretty yeah, dang Pop powerful soft magic there. Dang, I'm sorry. Poppy War was what I was trying to remember because I wanted to mention it. So that was my original yeah. purpose of proposing the lightning round. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> so. um, honestly, I, I kind of mentioned this for my reading list, but the, the book I'm reading by Benny Hendrix called Orluvalk or something like that. Can't don't know how to pronounce it. Uh -huh. It has some really cool um, like this candle magic and horn magic, like horn from Narwhals. Narwhals. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's kind of kind of reminiscent of Powder Mage thus far. Yeah. And Shadowless, the book that I just reviewed with Randall McNally also has a lot, a lot of magic. That's a fun one. Cool, so now we wanna hear, listeners, we wanna hear your entries to the top three competition. We'll do this throughout March. I'll post a video on Twitter inviting you to submit your entries. Fabulous prizes for the winner in the form of a hardback copy of Shadowless by Randall McNally, which uh, my interview with him will be up soon on Phantology. Any last words, guys? Just, I feel like it just want, it shows kind of the creativity of the genre, these magic systems. Cause I mean, I feel like I try and think of unique magic systems and I'm like, man, these all suck. And then you read a new story and it's like so unique uh -huh. and awesome. It's like awesome. they've all been taken until you pick up that next book and there's a new one. Also, yeah. magic is like really hard to write. We, we have a little project that we've been working on and I always thought magic would be the easy part. No, magic is so dang hard to write. <laughs> right, well, I should say. Yeah, yeah, you really got to plan it out. Exactly, know exactly how it's going to work before they start flinging it around. Yeah. Cool, thanks for listening to another episode of Phantology. If you want to see more episodes, you can do that at www.phantologybooks.com. And you can support the show at patreon.com slash ontology underscore books. If you want to talk to us more, you can join our Discord. Invites are on the episode description links and on our website and everywhere that you see. Phantology, we'd love to have you come on and chat with us and let us know what your magic systems are and what mistakes we make because uh, we do do that every now and then. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. See you guys this later. is the wet blanket signing off. <laughs> Uh. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Phantology. If you'd like to let us know your opinions on all things sci-fi and fantasy, join our Discord. Invites are in the episode descriptions below. If you'd like to support the show, like these fine folks here, you can do that at patreon.com slash phantology underscore books. Patrons get early access to new episodes, exclusive postings, and exclusive Discord benefits. But of course, just listening and watching and sharing with your friends and family is support enough. Journey before destination all. 